Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Matthew 19 and verse 26. We'll be looking at that and studying what this verse has to say and looking at a few verses that go around it. Again, I thank you for doing this. And if you're able and willing, before or during or after this video, uh, once again, I encourage you to open Bibles and study along to see the truth is being taught. But if you see that the truth is being taught, I ask that you like this, share it. If you share it now, then it'll help get it to others while I'm live and share it to your friends and so if you share it if you like it if you emoji it that also helps uh, Facebook's to decide to push it more to other people so that helps this video gets out and the goal is to help spread the Word of God so Matthew 19 and verse 26 is what we're going to be looking at today and so if you turn along with me it rings out here in Matthew 19 in verse 26 it says but Jesus looked at them and said to them with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible and I think if you were to look at just this verse it has a lot to say in its own but what is this what is he talking about that is impossible and when it comes down to it when we think about mankind and what is impossible there's a lot of things we could throw in there but what Matthew 19 is talking about here is the fact that it is impossible for a rich man to get into heaven. Um, that is what it brings out. He says it's very difficult. So what I want to do is go back a few verses and go ahead and read a few verses with this. And to put it in context, because I didn't go completely back and get the full Matthew 19, but just before this took place, a rich young ruler had approached Jesus and was asking him about salvation. And Jesus had told him to keep the commandments. And the young ruler says, well, which ones? And so Jesus went further in detail and told him to honor your father and mother, do not murder, do not steal, love thy neighbor. And so, you know, be, be these commands that, that are right there that we can look to the law of Moses and we can look and see today. And so the rich young ruler looked at those, and he, he goes further. He says, well, I've kept these from my youth. What do I lack? What do I need to be perfect? And so Jesus goes further and tells him to sell all that he has and give it to the poor and come follow me. And the young ruler left because he had many things, and he wasn't willing to sell everything. 
And so after that is what we're going to read. We're going to read here in Matthew 19 and verse 23. As the young ruler leaves, Jesus looks to his disciples here. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Surely I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then? Can be saved. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And so as we look at the verse of the day here in verse 26, and we consider what Jesus is saying here, and we get to talk about money is what we're talking about in one point that can bring out here. And it's obvious that he's talking about money because we're talking about a rich man, whether or not a rich man can enter into heaven. Jesus says it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of the needle. As it, once again, we get into that point, well, that's impossible. How can a camel go through that tiny little eye when, it, when the camel's a thousand times bigger, right? And, you know, sometimes we try to thread the needle, and, you know, we have the hardest time doing that, let alone get a camel to go through the eye of the needle. And it's just... You, you, you sit there, and just like the disciples then, how? Then who can be saved? You know, if, it, if it's that much, it's going to be that hard, who, who can be saved? And so if we just read that one part there, might everybody say, well, it's time to just give up. Might as well just, you know, throw in the hat and just walk away. The thing is, is with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are. We have salvation through Christ. We have hope through Christ. We have faith in our Lord and Savior, and that's how we can get to heaven. That's how we can serve our God and have our sins forgiven and live uh, without fear today. Is because God is there for you. That's remembering who our God is. Remembering the sacrifice that Christ has made for you. And what a difference that makes in one's life. Because we can go through our life and thinking, well, there's no hope for me. There's nothing more that I can do. That the limits of men are, are at a certain point and that's as far as we're going to go. But when it comes to adding God to your side... We should be asking, if God is for us, who can be against us? What can stop us? Now, understand, money is not evil in its own. We're told the love of money is the root to all kinds of evil. The love, the, the lust effort, the desire for more, and, and letting it overtake your life and serving it like an idol. Because we know we have to have money, right? We're told that he who does not provide for his own is worse than an unbeliever. We have to make sure the food's on the table for the family. We have to make sure we have a roof over our head and clothes on, on our kids. But money in itself is not evil. It's the love of money. It's the desire to more and more and the greediness that ends up overtaking your life. And it's the same thing with any other sin that, that you may struggle with. It may not be money that you struggle with. But if you allow these sins and temptations to overtake your life, when you sit there, how can we come back from that? Well, the answer is God. The answer is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can have your sins forgiven. You can turn your life away from that. And you can overcome the temptations. You look in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 9 and 10, and it goes forth and lists these sins and iniquities that we're told will not these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then you read verse 11. Verse 11 is an awesome verse because you get through, you read through these things, you're like, man, once again, you just like this rich man. Well, who can, who can be saved then? Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then you read verse 11, and it goes forth, and then he says, but you, you have been sanctified. You have been justified. You have been washed. You have been cleansed. He goes through and makes mention that the... Such were some of you. You guys were caught up in these sins, but you changed your path. You've repented of your sins. 
and you put God first in your life. And so that's what you need to do today. You need to make sure that you put God first in your life. And if you've done that, we encourage you to keep on fighting the good fight, to continue faithfully. But if you've not been baptized, if you've yet to obey the gospel, we encourage that you do so. And if you have questions, we encourage that, I encourage that you reach out to me, that you reach out and we'll study with you or, or reach out to someone else, whatever we can do to help you. We always want to be there to help one another get to heaven. That's our goal is to get there ourselves and to help everyone else. So thank you for joining. Again, if you will, like this, share it, and please help others to see this also. I thank you for all the uh, for continuing to watching. I'll talk to you later.